In the 1980s, home computers had yet to reach a level of graphical fidelity that could match what was seen on the cinema screens. But that didn't stop some developers attempting to recreate the horrors that you could see at your local cinema or in your local video rental store on your home micro. In this Halloween Havoc 24 video, we're going to be looking at two such titles based around popular horror franchises of the 1980s. This is 81632-bit, this is Halloween Havoc 2024. So, the first game we're going to look at is Power Software's The Evil Dead, based off the incredibly popular Sam Raimi film with the same title. Now, The Evil Dead may seem like a strange title to convert to a video game, but at the time, The Evil Dead was a huge property, especially in the UK, where, thanks to the video nasty scare, the title was all over the popular media. Now, the game itself was released for the ZX Spectrum, the Commodore 64 and the BBC Micro, although we're only going to be looking at the C64 and the ZX Spectrum versions here. Now, in terms of the game itself, it's quite simple. <clears throat> the game is set at the cabin from the Evil Dead, and you are basically looking at the game from a top-down view, very similar to a title such as Attic Attack or Wizard's Lair, and the idea of the game is to defeat all the Deadite monsters, which as you go along you defeat them, you gain extra weapons which are more powerful. Once you've cleared all the monsters from around the cabin, and to help you with this you can lock some of the monsters out to deal with the ones that are already inside, you have to grab the Necronomicon, aka the Book of the Dead, and destroy it, thus destroying the evil, much as in the film. Now. It's quite basic, to be honest. It's it's a very simple game when you sort of break it down, but it is fairly enjoyable. You know, it's it's got that arcade appeal that you would expect from games of the time, where they try to keep things as simple and as easy to play as possible, yet try to make it as tough a game by throwing enemies at you. Now, this game has an interesting release history. The Commodore 64 and BBC micro versions were just released to the market. Yet for some reason, the ZX Spectrum version, which certainly at the time in Palace's home market of the UK was the most popular home computer, only actually appeared on the B-side of their hit game Cauldron instead. Now, I'm not going to claim that this is the greatest game of its type. It isn't. But when you think about how the horror movie looked the fact is you were never going to get a game that managed to translate the incredible visceral horror of the evil dead with its gruesome effects and crazy camera angles to a home computer of the time at the time early 1980s this was a 1984 release this was the best you could hope for and you know what the guys at power software did a damn good job. Now, the second game we're looking at in this video is Domark's Friday the 13th from 1986. Now, this is not to be confused with the 1989 NES title Friday the 13th, or obviously the later 2017 Friday the 13th. No, this game was released in 1986 by Domark on ZX Spectrum, the Commodore 64, and the Amstrad CPC. Although today, you'll only see footage from the ZX Spectrum and C64 versions. Now, the object of the game is simple. You have to protect yourself and your friends from Jason on what is a fairly early example of what we would now call an open world. You have full reign to wander around the game's map. You can see your friends, you can find Jason, you can find weapons lying around, and... 
there are various buildings that you can go in. You can use the weapons to confront Jason, and you can make sure that your friends don't get killed. Now, Jason can hide as one of your friends, and he's only visible if you hit him, at which point he changes into the Jason sprite. Now, as you can see from the footage, the game uses a sort of a pseudo 3D top-downy view, which is effective and a little more interesting than, say, Evil Dead's over purely overhead view. And, you know, it's not too bad, really. The view is a little bit more side-on when you're inside a building, but that's just one of those things. Now, you have a few interesting effects here. There's a bit of sampled audio. And every so often, if a character's killed, you may get a cutaway to a single screen of somebody who's had a machete buried in their head or some such. Now, in terms of playing the game, it's okay, to be honest. You know, it's it's not the greatest game in the world, but equally so, it's not the worst. Although it's very strange, the, the way this game was developed. The game appears to be based around Friday the 13th Part 2, in terms of its plotting, but it uses publicity materials based on Friday the 13th, the final chapter, and was released at around the same time as Friday the 13th, part six, Jason Lives. Bit of a hodgepodge. Now, to be fair, they did market this game quite well. They promoted it heavily in magazines at the time. Um, you got two free blood capsules if you purchased the game, which was a fun little thing for a young chap or chapess. But the magazines weren't so kind. Some magazines, such as Micromania and CBG, gave the game some pretty good scores. Other magazines, such as Crash, Your Sinclair, Commodore Users, Zap64, really did dunk on the game. Now, for me, it's okay. It, it's not a game I would have probably rushed out and spent sort of seven to ten pounds on. But on a budget re-release for a couple of quid, yeah, I'd have probably taken a chance on it. Now, I have to be completely honest, of the two games, I actually had more fun playing the Evil Dead game. I just prefer those Attic Attack style titles to the way the Friday the 13th game plays. But, you know, they're both fun in their own way, and they both show that, even with the limitations of the times, game publishers really did try to bring horror to the home micros in a way that was interesting and eye-catching if only from a marketing perspective. Now, if you've enjoyed today's video, don't forget to hit that like button, ring the bell, and you know, hit the subscribe if you've really enjoyed it. It's all good. You can join us on Halloween Havoc every uh, other week this month. There are loads of other videos here on my channel. If you want to join the channel, feel free. There are Patreon and YouTube memberships available. Big shout out to my current members, left back and old scott retro the details are on screen now and i will see you on the next video so long